Here's a check on stories we're following for you today on Robin Hood Radio. Pat Pagano's weekend tri-state forecast, sunny, patchy clouds, breezy today, mid-70s, clear and cool tonight, down about 50. Saturday, sunny, high around 80. Sunday, sun and clouds, mid-80s. And Monday, partly cloudy, temperature in the mid-80s. We'll check in and get the details on Pat's forecast in just a few minutes. Another notice yesterday from Region 1 on COVID notices in Lee H. Kellogg School, Kent and Salisbury. At Lee H. Kellogg, a family member of two Lee H. Kellogg School students, elementary and middle school, tested positive for COVID-19. The family member has never been in the building and has had no close contact within six feet or 15 minutes or more over a 24-hour period with any staff or students other than students who live in the home. All family members will remain at home in quarantine per CDC preferred guidelines. No need to close classrooms at the school at this time. In Kent, a Kent Center School staff member tested positive for coronavirus. The affected person has not been in the school building since Tuesday, September 7th, and has had no close contact within six feet or 15 minutes or longer over a 24-hour period with any staff or students and will remain at home in quarantine isolation. Salisbury Central School staff member tested positive for coronavirus. The affected person has not been in the building since Tuesday, September 7th, and has had no close contact with staff or students within six feet or 15 minutes or longer longer over a 24-hour period and will remain at home in isolation quarantine per CDC guidelines. There is no need to close classrooms or school at this time. Region 1 being very transparent in keeping the area aware of what's going on with COVID-19 students, staff, and family members. Well, it appears that sports betting and other forms of online gambling in Connecticut will be available within the next 30 days. That's following a development in Washington that moves the state closer to a major expansion of available gaming. The governor, along with the heads of the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation and Mohegan Tribal Council, announced they received word from the Bureau of Indian Affairs that the proposed revisions to the relevant gaming compacts have been granted final approval. Federal approval of the revisions brings the tribes, along with the Connecticut Lottery Corporation, one step closer to implementing sports wagering and online gambling in the state. New York took another step yesterday towards setting up a regulatory system for marijuana as Senate Majority Leader Andrew Stewart Cousins made her pick for the state's cannabis board. Former Senator Jen Metzger of Ulster County, a Democrat, is Stewart Cousins' pick for the cannabis control board which is tasked with regulating and overseeing the legal marijuana and hemp markets in the state. Stuart Cousins of Yonkers unveiled her selection Thursday, a day after the Assembly Speaker appointed Buffalo Area Attorney Adam Perry to the same board. The appointments followed the governor's decision to name former Assembly Member Tremaine Wright as the board's chair last week, breaking a logjam that persisted since then Governor Andrew Cuomo and the legislature legalized marijuana in March. Music in Common in Sheffield has announced the launch of the Black Legacy Project, a music collaboration that celebrates black history and builds solidarity to advance racial justice, equity, and inclusion. The national project is produced in partnership with community stakeholders at the local level and is part of the Music in Common's Past, Present, Forward Conflict Transformation Initiative. Black and white artists of diverse ages and backgrounds will revisit and reimagine songs central to black American experience, as well as write new songs that speak to modern-day issues connected to racism and the calls for change. For registration and a roundtable, which is coming up, music auditions and more information, musicincommon.org slash blacklp.html. You can reach Todd Mack at musicincommon.org or 413-248-6070. The Millerton Fire Company is ready to unveil their annex at an open house. The top secret will be revealed during the Millerton Fire Company Northeast Fire District's open house set for Sunday from 11 till 4 at its annex at 29th Century Boulevard, according to Fire Chief Jason Watson. During the event, the closely held names of six longtime and or former fire company members will also be announced as fire department equipment is rededicated to them. With both fire company buildings open for tours, the event will be centered at the newer of the two firehouses, the 
firehouse across from the street at 24th Century Boulevard. It's the first time the public will be able to tour the new annex facility, which was built in 2017, mainly through the generosity of a private donor who wished to remain anonymous. Our memorial, dedicated to the people who died September 11th, and it's done each year since Patriot Day was formed, will happen at the Church of St. Joseph in North Canaan for 24 hours, beginning at 12 midnight on September 11th and going to 11.59 in the morning, a National Day of Remembrance. You can visit. No speeches, nothing for sale, no crowds, just a quiet place to visit. The timeline for activities, Patriot Day 9-11-01 Memorial. Dot com. State Representative William Smitty Pignatelli of Lennox has organized a memorial procession in South County to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks and thank Berkshire County first responders for their service to the community. The procession will begin promptly at 11 a.m. on Saturday from the Mass DOT District 1 office in Lennox, proceed through downtown Lee, Lennox, Stockbridge, and Great Barrington, ending in Sheffield, where there will be a lunch to honor the participants. The procession will include close to 30 vehicles, including police cruisers, fire trucks, first response vehicles, and more than 70 first responders. First responders from communities in the 4th Berkshire District, along with Massachusetts State Police, Berkshire County Sheriff's Office, and Massachusetts Emergency Management will be participating in that event. There's a food drive through free food distribution from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Our Lady of Hope Parish, 8074 State Route 22 in Copake Falls, New York. Also coming up, Cornwall Town Hall Players, Ibsen's The Dollhouse at the Town Hall, Town Hall Players, The Dollhouse, Guest Director Robin Frome, September 10th, 11th, 17th, and 18th from 7.30, with a limited attendance of 25 reservations required. Email the Cornwall Town Hall Players at gmail.com. Also on the Sharon Playhouse, Carrie Louise, a comedian, will be preferring. She just appeared on a new Showtime comedy special called Funny Women of Certain Age, more information, SharonPlayhouse.org. And on Saturday at 8 p.m., the Sharon Playhouse presents the Ravons, a high-energy rock and roll band originally formed to revitalize the music of Buddy Holly and the Crickets. They produce and star in two different Buddy Holly tribute shows, as well as a 50s and 60s rock and roll tribute. Tickets for more information, SharonPlayhouse.org. Underwriting support for Robin Hood Radio Stock Market Report comes from the Interlaken. Interlaken Road in Lakeville. You'll find them at interlakenin.com. Also on Facebook and Instagram, Salisbury Bank, salisburybank.com. Underwriting support from Vialli Insurance, located at 75 Main Street in Lee, Massachusetts, insuring hard-to-play seasonal and secondary homes in the Berkshire since 1912. For all your insurance needs, 413-243-0347 on the web, by AlleyInsurance.com. The Dow Jones Industrial Average will start off today at 34,879.38, the NASDAQ at 15,248.25, and the S&P 500 at 4,493.28. We'll take a look at the tri-state forecast. That'll come your way in just a few moments.